Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. Everybody thinks you need to be powerful to strike the ball. Everybody's lifting weights. Worst thing you can do, because what you want to do is create a swing that has freedom. And if you have a swinging motion, you get maximum club head speed. So that's what Ernest taught. And throughout the years, he taught this way. He only taught one thing. And everybody said he's repetitious and whatnot. But guess what? It worked. He had more lessons than anybody else. He used to give 3,000 lessons in his studio every year. Wow. And that's incredible when you think about it. He was yeah. just booked up from morning to night. And he loved teaching people because of the same reason I love teaching people. I'm helping them play better golf and easier golf. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Our guest today is Ron Frankel of the Frankel Golf Academy and FrankelGolf.com. Ron and his brother are outspoken proponents of the Ernest Jones method of golf instruction. Ernest Jones had a huge impact on golf instruction during the 1920s and 30s. Now, the last time we spoke about Ernest Jones was just about a year ago on episode number 187 back in July of 2009 when we had Manuel de la Torre on the Golf Smarter podcast. Now, I recently looked up Ernest Jones in Wikipedia, and it said this. One of Jones' devotees was Angel de la Torre, who in turn taught this approach to his son, Manuel de la Torre. These two professionals alone would add thousands to the list of golfers who benefited from a club-focused approach to golf. Ernest Jones often said, The trouble with teaching of golf is that one is taught what a swing produces, your body movement, instead of how to produce a swing, club movement. Today, Manuel de la Torre is the preeminent authority on the Ernest Jones approach and has further developed it in his teaching. That show is still in our archives and is available to all Golf Smarter members, but if you're interested in hearing it again, it's now available for only 99 cents in our Golfer's Mart. But Manuel de la Torre is not the only one who understands and professes this method of teaching. That's why we have Ron on today's show. Ernest Jones is a very interesting story in golfing lore, and that's part of why I wanted Ron to share more light on his history. But more importantly, this is a really valuable method because it's self-correcting. Now, as important as it is to have a teacher, eh, not all of us are going to do that. But we all seem to tinker with our swings. Don't do that during your round, by the way. Just do it on the driving range. Play with what you got on the, on the course. Anyway, we all tinker with what we're doing. So why not have a better understanding of what corrections we need to make, right? That's why we brought Ron on. Hey, welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Ron. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Well, it's, uh, it's great to have you on because we're going to go into a, uh, a topic that we've never had the opportunity to discuss before. Uh, and it's interesting because so many times we've had people come up with the name Ernest Jones, and yet nobody's really been able to give us a definitive answer of who Ernest Jones was and what he has contributed to golf. And I, that's why I'm excited to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you. So let's start there. Uh, well, let's start with, with Ernest Jones, his history. Well, Ernest Jones was a, uh, a top golfer in Europe. He's an, an Englishman. And in World War I, uh, he lost his leg. Now, back then, the prosthesis were terrible, so he knew he couldn't play golf. And he turned to teaching. And what he taught is one simple thing. It's a motion, and that motion has a feel. It's a swinging motion. Uh, Ernest, uh, for years, uh, created 13 major winners and literally hundreds of local and regional champions. Uh, he was the most sought-after teacher in the world for 30 years. As a matter of fact, uh, when 
1950, he was invited to the uh, PGA annual meeting as their honorary guest speaker. Uh, during that meeting, he told them how he taught, why he taught the way he did, and then he fielded questions from the golfing audience, and all the greats were there. Uh, you know, Sneed was there, Bobby Jones was there, as an example. And during that, during that meeting, the uh, ex-president of the PGA uh, stood up, and uh, it was Horton Smith, and he was president. He was also a Masters champion. And he said that, uh, thank you very much for being here, Mr. Jones, but if it's that simple, we in the PGA cannot adapt your method of instruction because we won't be able to give enough lessons to feed our family. Now, Ernest's reply was very simple. He simply said, it's a shame. You're going to keep golfers struggling. All of the golf writers during Ernest's era wanted to adapt this method. So did, so did all the great players, such as Bobby Jones. Uh, and yet the PGA was deathly afraid of what I teach and what Ernest taught for the simple reason that it's self-correcting. In, a, in, in fact, when you do teach this, what happens is it works, and people want more of it, and you actually get more lessons than less, because people are getting better, and their friends see it. They see, they see you swinging better. They see, uh, they see uh, you, you, you scoring better. They see you enjoying the game more, because what I teach is really, and what Ernest taught is simply uh, the easiest on the body, and it's e easiest on the mind. When over the ball, you're only thinking about one thing, one thing only. And in reality, how many things can you think of in the one and a quarter seconds it takes to swing your golf club? That's number one. So it's the easiest mentally. And physically, it's the easiest because we teach to swing it with the hands. The only part of the body that touches the club and a lot of body parts to respond to the motion naturally. You're not trying to put it in positions. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's style of swing will be slightly different. But what we're concerned with is the form, and that form is creating a swinging motion with the club head. And that's the only reason, the only reason why you hit a good golf shot. Uh, I want to ask a lot of questions now about Ernest Jones. It kinda, it's kind of like saying that in, in 50 years from now that no one will have ever heard of uh, Hank Haney or, you know, um, some of the, the more famous instructors today, if he was right. that popular, how come it was so quickly that he's forgotten? I just did a, a quick search uh, in audible.com and I typed in Ernest Jones and it came up with nothing. Are there no books about him? Yeah, he's written, he's written several books. Uh, he wrote most, books. Excuse me, yes, Ernest Jones wrote several books and his most famous book was Swing the Clubhead. As a matter of fact, it was on the Golf Digest classic book list up till several years ago when they discontinued the list. There were three books that they sold. He was one of them. It's one of the best-selling books of all time in golf. But the PGA has squashed Ernest Jones because, once again, what we teach is self-correcting, and they're afraid of it. As a matter of fact, when you go through PGA school to learn how to teach, they don't even mention Ernest Jones. So, you know, well-meaning golf pros are teaching mechanics, and they know nothing about Ernest Jones. And if they do find out about Ernest Jones, they say, yeah, it makes sense, but they don't understand him, and they don't know how to teach it properly, and that's the problem. And give us some examples of some of those great players that, that worked with him. Well, I guess, I guess one, of the, one, one of, I mean, he taught all the greats during his time. I mean, these are people you probably wouldn't have heard of. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, he taught, I'll give you an example. All right. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'll give you a quote. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of which one I want to give you. I got so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did, I did a, I did do a search on audible.com for swinging the club head and it came right. up with five different books all about swingers. And I <laughs> like, oh, swingers. <laughs> yeah, like a little bit more, a collection of erotic short stories. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I don't think that's what we're trying to find here. <laughs> all right. Like, audio books. The, one, the audio one thing books. that Bobby Jones, uh, two things. First of all, Bobby Jones said, if I had a relative or a friend 
that wanted to learn golf, I would send them to Ernest Jones. He backed them totally. Wow. He also said this, Bobby Jones, and I'll quote this. The one idea for golfers to keep always in mind is that when playing a shot, his job is to swing the club head. If he does this, striking the ball will take care of itself. So, you know, I mean, I got quotes from all sorts of, of, of great golfers today, modern day golfers. As an example, there's not a pro that I've ever met that doesn't tell me the same thing, and that is that they play by feel. But that's not what they teach. Hmm. That's exactly what we teach. Because we teach a swing motion which has a particular feel. Now that motion, that motion that Ernest taught, all right, is a simple motion. It's a swinging motion. Now there are a lot of different motions, Fred. You can have pushing motions, you can have hauling motions, you can have jerking motions, but none of them, none of them have the two properties that a swinging motion has. And that is, it creates centrifugal force and it repeats its arc. Now, centrifugal force is where you get the power. That's where you get your power. You know, I, I, I like to use the example with my students of the shot putter and the hammer thrower. Now, they both use a 16-pound weight, but the hammer thrower goes three times as far because of centrifugal force. And that's why you see little guys out on tour knocking at 280, 300 yards, because they have a great swinging motion. You don't, need, you don't need muscle. You don't need size. You don't have to work out. I mean, guys like Byron Nelson never worked out. Byron Nelson won 11 straight tournaments. That'll never be beat. Yeah, a different era. I mean, the competition didn't work out either, right? Well, yes and no. Most, most of the records that were set by these guys are still intact. And that's with the old clubs, that's with bumpy greens, that's with wooden shafts. I mean, today's glo- uh, a golf club improvement, all right, uh, has helped a little bit. But the National Golf Foundation came out with a statement, and they said that in the last 30 years, the average handicap has not come down. Now, we know that golf clubs are more forgiving, okay? We know that they go further, especially the balls. They're going 40, 50 yards further than they did before. And right, we know the course conditions are much better. And yet it seems like nobody's getting better. Right. And the reason for that is simple. They're using the wrong key to unlock the door. Golf instruction today is basically mechanics. And mechanics put you in positions and angles, weight shifts, all this stuff that they're talking about. That happens naturally in a swinging motion. If you think about it, if you try to put your body into a position, you destroy the motion. And that's the problem today. Because what they're doing is they're piecing together a swing. A motion can't be pieced together. Universal laws say it can't be pieced together. The definition of a swing, all right, is a to and fro motion that repeats between one point and another point. All right, and it's unrestricted. Meaning that you can't try to control it. If you take a string with a weight and you swing it back and forth and you try to control it, that, swing, that string's going to bend. It's going to get out of line. Because once you try to control it, once you try to put a certain angle on it or whatever it may be, what happens is you interfere with the motion. Everybody thinks you need to be powerful to strike the ball. Everybody's lifting weights. Worst thing you can do. Worst thing. All right, because what you want to do is create a swing that has freedom. And if you have a swinging motion, all right, you get maximum club head speed. So that's what Ernest taught. And throughout the years, he taught this way. He only taught one thing. And everybody said he's repetitious and whatnot, but guess what? It worked. He had more lessons than anybody else. He used to give 3,000 lessons in his studio every year. Wow. Wow. And that's incredible when you think about it. He was yeah. just booked up from morning to night. And, he, and he, loved, he loved teaching people because of the same reason I love teaching people. I'm helping them. Yeah. I'm helping them play better golf and easier golf. 
Oh, easiest on the, the mind, key. you're only thinking about one thing. <laughs> easiest on the body, you're allowing it to respond to the motion. Yeah. You know, uh, when you get a short, stocky guy, he can't swing the same as a tall, lanky guy. Everybody's flexibility is different. Yep. So working on positions, working on angles is, is really useless. All right? And every time, every time you say you've got to be in this position, all right, I'll show you a superstar who's not. Hmm. And I guess, I guess, uh, let's see, who said that? Oh, here we go. Gary Player said that. Uh, I'll quote him. For every fundamental in golf, I will show you a superstar. And I don't use that word lightly. Who doesn't do it? Now think about that. The big thing in the last few years has been beyond playing, the one playing, the two playing, etc. All right, now let's ask Jim Furyk about that. Because Jim Furyk loops a swing way out of plane. But Jim Furyk has a great swinging motion. He's going to be around for a long time. He's not going away. No, he's not going anywhere. I'm sorry to interrupt you, and we are going to pick it up. I do have to stop for a commercial here. Ron. Thank you for the interruption. I do want to get back to this. And we, we talk, you talk a lot about motion. We've talked a lot about tempo. Is there a difference? Some, some people even say that tempo is the missing fundamental. Uh, absolutely, I disagree. Really? All right. Tem- tempo, all right, is how fast or slow you swing it. Okay. Uh, Nick Price has a very fast tempo. Mm-hmm. Ernie Ells is a very slow tempo, mm-hmm. but they both do one thing in common. They create a swinging motion. Okay. What we're interested in is rhythm, not tempo. That was my next question. Yeah. Rhythm is a reoccurring beat by definition, and it's built into a swinging motion, what I teach. And that's what we're concerned with. I'm not concerned with the tempo at all. Tempo is a golf term. It's a modern day golf term. Okay, so let's let's break this down. I really want to get into this idea of motion with you and, and see if you can give us a better explanation because I frankly have yet to grasp it. I've watched your DVD um, and we've had conversations multiple times now. I'm still not grasping exactly what you're saying when you talk about motion. Okay. As I said, a swinging motion, all right, by definition, a swing is an unrestricted motion all right, that goes between two points. A motion cannot be broken up into parts and put together. Science says no. What Ernest taught and what I teach is based on universal laws. It's not going to get. It's not going to change. That's why. That's why this method uh, works today as well as it did 50 years ago. Because we're dealing with, with, with centrifugal force. We're dealing with motion. All right? I'll give, you, I'll give you a better one, okay? Leonardo da Vinci. We all know who Leonardo is, right? Yeah, we have an idea. He was a hell of a golfer, too, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he wasn't a golfer. <laughs> but he was but I don't a genius. Want to talk about him. He was a genius, and he understood how to swing the club head perfectly. Now, here's what he said, okay? Wait, he Leonardo said, said this? Yes. He said, quote, a blow is the son of motion, the grandson of force, whilst their mutual ancestors wait. Hmm. Notice that the quote, the word motion comes first. Now I'll explain. A blow is striking the ball. The motion is a swinging motion. Hmm. The weight is the club head. But then she also said about this force, which is centrifugal force. Force is always desirous of overcoming its cause, and when it does, the force dies. That's why when you swing harder and try to kill the ball, usually it doesn't go any further, and it goes offline. Absolutely. And that's the reason, because you don't have a swing motion. You've interfered with with that motion. Uh, Leonardo really had it right. And, uh, you know, Ernest actually learned that from Leonardo. You know, the lineage uh, with the Frankel Golf Academy and Ernest Jones is simple. 
my brother Arnie, who I've been teaching with in the school for the last 20 years, uh, he uh, learned it from uh, from Nick Martino on Long Island, who was Ernest's best friend. And he was with Nick for over eight years. And my brother played some uh, professional tournaments and whatnot. He basically teaches it, as I do. He's semi-retired right now. The only other person that really took up Ernest's uh, method and taught it pure was Fred Austin, his brother-in-law, who was at the Marion Country Club, pretty famous country club. They're, they both passed on. Unfortunately, most of the people that they taught, other pros and whatnot, got cause and effect mixed up. And what they started doing was mixing mechanics with this. And you can't do that. Once again, mechanics is positioning, et cetera, et cetera, and you can't do that with emotion. A swinging motion is, number one, it produces rhythm and timing. You get maximum acceleration at the bottom of the arc. You get, it repeats its arc for accuracy. And it creates centrifugal force for distance. It also creates balance. You have balance uh, without any, any movement. And you also have balance with movement. If you take a top and you spin it, it's creating centrifugal force. And it stays up and spins. As soon as it loses that centrifugal force and slows down, the top falls down. Bang. It's the same thing with a golf swing. If you create a swinging motion, you're going to get maximum club head speed. When you start adding your muscle to it, quote unquote, <laughs> what happens is you interfere with it and the club head actually slows down. One of the reasons uh, a lot of the Oriental girls are doing well on tour is they're brought up with the martial arts. The martial arts teaches exactly the same theory. The fastest blow in martial arts is open hand. It's not closed hand. All right? Martial arts is basic, basically what I'm teaching is a martial art. I don't want to scare off your viewers because, and you know, nobody expects you to be a black belt in golf. But... All right. Actually, we have a teacher who is a golf sensei that's been on the show a couple times. That is, a black, really, yeah, she claims to think she can turn you into a golf black belt. All right. <laughs> well, my my logo is a yin and a yang, and what I did was I put uh, trust the motion. I put arrows around it to show motion, and um, and uh, Franklin Golf Academy on the bottom. Uh, the reason I made up that logo it's, it's an interesting story. As I was teaching in California, I had just turned pro, this was about 25 years ago, and a gentleman came to me and said, I, uh, I was referred to you by a friend of mine. I said, okay. I said, have you taken any lessons, and how long have you been playing? He says, oh, I've been playing a little over a year, and I've taken about four series of lessons from different pros. These are series of lessons, right? So I said, well, what do you shoot? He says, I can't break 100. So I said, don't worry about it. That's not unusual. And he said, it is for me in that connotation. <laughs> so, I, so I had to ask him, I said, well, why are you different than everybody else? He said, because I'm a black belt eighth degree. I turned down my masters because I don't think I'm worthy. I can control every muscle in my body. I can just about stop my heart. And yet I can't hit this little white ball. Wow. So the first thing I said to him, I said, well, get hit out of your mind. Secondly, I have a little uh, martial arts training from the service. So we're at a very, very busy range in San Diego, right? And so I said, put down your club and throw a roundhouse kick for me, which is a long kick, which produces a lot of centrifugal force. And he looked at me cross-eyed. He said, uh-oh. So I said, just humor me, humor me. <laughs> so he executed it. Without a warm-up, I could hardly see his leg go or his foot. I mean, amazing. He was what he said he was. So I said, what kind of force did you create? And he knew. He said centrifugal force. So I said, okay, do it again. Get that feel. So he did it again. He says, yeah, I know what that feel is. I've been doing it all my life. So I said, okay, let's take the club. And I swung the club a couple of times with him. 
holding on to the club and just let him hold on to the handle and feel what I was doing. And I saw in the club a couple of times with him. And he started hitting golf balls. It was the best lesson I ever had. And wow, I great story. He starts hitting, and he's knocking them out there like he's a two or a three handicap. It blew his mind. It blew my mind. Now, here's the end of the story that will really get you. I didn't see the guy for about seven months. He comes popping into the pro shop <laughs> one day, and he says, Ron, I want to stop by to thank you. So I said, well, that's very nice. You know, we started talking. And I had to ask him, I said, well, how come you didn't come back for any other lessons? I said, I'm, I'm very surprised because you're the best lesson I ever had. He says, well, that's the point. He says, you showed me how to swing. All these other instructors, well-meaning as they were, showed me positions and angles. I can't think about 10 things when I'm over the ball. And that motion that you showed me, that feel that you showed me, is what I've been doing all my life. He says, I'm shooting in the low se- I mean, the high 70s, low 80s all the time now. <laughs> you just kind of gave the story, I don't even know if you recognized, but the reason, as you said earlier, that PGA professionals don't want to teach this method is exactly this story that you said. You gave the guy one lesson... And he never showed up again and never needed another lesson. What but, good that, – that doesn't help PGA professionals. They want people to continue to come back so they can tweak and tweak and tweak and put more things in our heads and make it more difficult for us. I mean, right. I'm not going to be an advocate for the PGA professionals right now. I, I completely see where you're coming from. But from your business perspective, that's a bad idea, isn't it? Not at all. Let, let me explain. All right. He is really the exception to the rule. All right. Because most people don't know what that feel is. He's, he had that feel all his life. Mm-hmm. That's all he's done. As I said, he was an eighth degree black belt and he refused belts because he didn't feel that he was worthy. All right. Most people I teach have no idea what this motion is. They have no idea what a swing is. As a matter of fact, I've asked, oh, I asked most of my students, a few thousand students, let's say, what is a swing? I have not gotten back one correct definition of what a swing is. Mm-hmm. I've asked hundreds of pros, and they teach, they teach people what a, you know, the swing. They don't know what a swing is either. They're well-meaning. They've been taught one way, just like when the earth was flat. Everybody thought it was flat. All the great minds in that, in that, that era thought it was flat until it was proven it wasn't. Well, it's the same thing here. Mechanics, all right, once again, create positions, angles, uh, body weight shift, and all that. They tell you what to do. And if you swing the club head, 99% of that happens automatically. It may not be in the exact position, they say. Because of your body type, you may not have the flexibility. You may not have uh, whatever it may be, you know, based on your body type. Right. But what happens to the average person is, is they learn this. The game, right away, the putting and the short game gets better immediately because they're not thinking about power, power and distance. As they practice this, and it's a matter of proper practice, there's a way to practice this, and it's proper practice, all right? They're irons. All of a sudden, they're striking all their irons really well. And then they go to their woods, the long shots. Now, most of the guys that I teach are into power and distance. I call it the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde effect. Because once they get to a wood or a long iron, all of a sudden, they change. You don't even recognize them any their swing anymore. Because they don't have a swing. Because they're trying to power the ball out there. They're trying to kill the ball. And it's self-defeating. So what happens with my, my, my normal student, which can be a zero handicap scratch player, or it can be a uh, 40 handicap. I teach exactly the same thing to all people because you can't get it 100%. I remember growing up as a kid. I mean, I'm 63 years old. And as a kid, Ben Hogan was my, one of my idols, great swinger of the club. 
And he came out with a statement, and I'll quote it. He said, I only hit two or three shots around. I never knew what that meant until I started teaching this. That's really interesting. I want to know, does, um, do you find that there's greater success with your method, or Ernest Jones' method, uh, with people who are new to the sport or uh, to, to golf or even people who have been, and we only have, I'm sorry, we only have a couple minutes left, but even people who have been playing for years and years, they can easily adopt this method. Well, let's put it this way. My easiest student are children. Mm. They have no tension. Right. They get up, I tell them, the, I have the largest uh, junior clinic in California. And they just get up, I tell them the force is with you, I show them how to swing and bang. They have the ability to mimic. Okay. We lose that as we get older. Sure. My, se- my second easiest student is a woman who has never, never touched a golf club because she doesn't have any preconceived notions. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. So she's, women are very good listeners, number one. And number two, she's going to do what I tell her. And that's all she has to do. As long as somebody follows what I teach, I have a 99, 99.9% track record. There's very few people I haven't been able to teach. I'll go into one quick story. I had a lawyer from San Francisco fly in, and he's one of these high-priced lawyers, and he was into mechanics, 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 mechanics. And he was arguing with me through the whole lesson. I finally got disgusted because we don't use a video camera because, once again, what a swing motion does, it produces a certain feel, and that's what we're teaching. Uh, and you can't take a pic- picture of feel, just like you can't take a picture of the pain in a toothache. But I ran inside, I grabbed uh, my the pro, the pro that, uh, my, you know, we were teaching separately. We have a separate entity. We don't work for a club, all right? We lease from them, and we run our schools and give our private lessons. Uh, I ran inside, got his video camera, he showed me how to use it real quick, went out, and I filmed him swinging. Now, I told him, you can be in all the right positions and not swing the club and miss the shot. Bang. I took the video, he was in all the perfect positions, missed the shot. So I showed it to him. And he said, well, let me see that again. I showed it to him a second time. And he said, let me see it one more time. He looked at it the third time, and then he looked me right in the eye, and he said, there must be something wrong with your camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I simply said, I'm sorry, I can't teach you. The lesson's over. Oh, wow. Wow. Let's talk Every uh, once briefly. in a while, you run into somebody who can't accept the simplicity of this, and that's sure. the problem. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. By the way, we swing all the clubs the same. That's a quote from Byron Nelson. You know, that's he won 11 to tournaments in a row. Well, I want to thank uh, Fred Greenberg. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, if my father would not have changed his name, my name would be Fred Greenberg. But Fred Greenberg is a Golf Smarter listener who introduced me to you, and I, I really appreciate the suggestion. Thank you, Fred. Now, to find out more about uh, your school and about you, uh, you go to franklgolf.com, F R A N K E L golf.com frankel golf ron thank you so much for coming on to the golf smarter podcast this was really interesting i'm going to see if i can do some more research about ernest jones as well um because you know as many quotes as you've provided in this show it's we're looking for quotes all the time so it's been fascinating it really oh, i've got a lot more yeah i bet you me. do I bet there's you not do. a great player in history you didn't say that they they play by seal Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just amazing uh, what's going on today. And once again, the pros mean well. That's what they've been taught. They don't understand Ernest Jones. A lot of them have never even heard of Ernest Jones. And that's, that's a shame, and that's a pity, because it's making golfers struggle. 